Now then, we had a kiln firing party yesterday and a load of my friends turned up um, and particular thanks to Kevin who spent most of his time actually firing the kiln whilst I was doing all sorts of other things but it's nice to see everybody it really is and um, anyway I'd loaded this kiln the day before on the Friday and so therefore it meant that I could light the, light the kiln I don't know quarter past eight or something like that in the morning and just get it to slowly sort of warm up and we have where are we bricks up oh, there we go we have the kiln god created by Fran thank you Fran and let's remove the lid I'm gonna have to modify this lid just because when you put it together there's a problem of dropping things on the pots below so I have to make a, a whole lid frame that will probably lift up with a pulley and a winch or something like that or just a big bar and a counterweight and you know me I'll make it up as we go along but let's take the uh, the top off and have a look now the wind is from behind me so we're gonna get a bit of wind noise I've switched the turbine off so at least we don't have that or we're not competing with that so let's crack on okay let's remove this better get the kiln god out of the way first we don't want to break that now this was just now this was just a bisque fire and we got up to about 840 850 but we tried to keep it there for at least half an hour something like that just as a bit of heat soak really can we see we can so these are thermalite blocks that I've cut down and it's definitely warmer on one side than the other I really want to see what thermalite block does inside the kiln or at uh, you can see how it was leaking there yeah I want to see what these thermalite blocks do on the inner face of the kiln that would be very interesting and that's a bit of kiln shelf and another bit of homemade fire brick so right we just have to this is clay and sawdust so it's actually quite light so I just mix up a uh, a sort of slip of clay freshly dug leave it soaking 24 hours then whiz it up with them with the plaster mixer and then add sawdust to bring it to a, a working consistency right Let's try and get rid of some of this lift this one up and again so these are bits of kiln shelf oh interesting let's remove that thermalite block now this one was split before I put it there hopefully we're getting all this lot yeah we are ah.
Right, get rid of that. Okay, here we go. So, shall we zoom in a bit? I can feel the breeze, so I don't know whether we've got... So, these were some... Uh, they're for plant pots. And as you see, look, this is interesting. Where these bits of old tile were laid in there, see, there's still some unburned carbon there. But that doesn't matter. And there's another one. That's not so nice. And here's another one. Of the lot, I like the first one. Okay, what else have we got? A mug with um, white slip on the inside. And that is home clay. Another mug. That's home clay. Try and get that to ring, but it does. Another one. That's Tetford and has got a crack in it. Ah -ha. And it's slightly blue there, and this is the top layer. So we got a problem there. Can you see that there's a different colour there and it's got awful hot? Right, so that's scrap. And we've got another mug here, or a cup. White slip. Household clay. Because it's got a H on the bottom. And another one. Again, a different shape. This is that shape that I've been trying to develop. If you saw the the wild clay throwing number two video, um, that is Tetford. In fact, this is one of that batch because the uh, the uh, signature and the type of clay is stamped on there. Hopefully, you can see that. Can you hear that buzzard in the background? It's great, isn't it? And another one. That's fine. That's a household. That's a sort of like, sort of like the shape you would see cowboys drinking the tin mugs in the old cowboy films. The, the mugs were always wide and not quite so deep. Uh, another one here. That is Tetford. And it's fine. There's no crack. So we've got um, we've got one faulty mug at the moment. And this one, interesting. It's just yeah. That is Tetford slip put on this uh, Mave clay. And that is really shallow. And that this one is the clay from Herefordshire. And it felt like it had a little bit of um, silt in it. Because as it dried it felt slightly grainy. But it seems to have done the business. It's probably shrunk quite a lot. What else have we got here? And another one. Slightly different shape. I'm not sure if that's a crack or not. I can't see it on the inside. And that's a, that's house clay. Aha! And this one's come out all right. And I actually put quite a lot of support under there. So I'm pleased that that one's come out. Then I can do um, uh, a blue underglaze on the lettering 
and then do a transparent glaze on the top of that. Yeah, and then once that's done I'll just take a piece of wood and just fit it between there so that piece of wood can then screw onto a wall and a pin goes through there and a pin goes through there to hold it in place. That's great, I'm happy with that. There we go. Now we've got loads of bits of broken tile and whatnot that I've been using as stilts. That's what I used to support that mask. Let's just get all of these bits of tile out of the way. I only remove one shelf from this bottom row. Now that is very interesting really interesting you can't see it but oh no it's there down there that's fine okay I'm talking nonsense and you go what again this is another Maeve mug yeah that's the Maeve clay Ah, now this, we had a, get, a guest, or some guests, um, for a few days, and Amanda Jenkins, she went, ah, oh, let's have a go on the wheel, and she hadn't thrown anything on the wheel for 30 years, and she just threw that just straight off. I mean, it's a bit chunky, but I thought, right, we're going to fire that anyway, because... You know, she just got on and did it, which is great. Okay. Now, interesting. We've got a crack. Yeah. Two cracks there. And a bulge there. So, it got too hot. Yeah. So, that one's scrap. Now this is weird, look. And then it's dark round there and then it's light there. House clay. And it's slightly dished there. And there's a bloat in the bottom. There's a blister in the bottom. It got too hot. Even though it was raised up off the, the shelf. In fact, it was raised off the, the shelf and it was also sat, raised up off another uh, homemade fire brick that I was firing. So that's no good. Another one, it's cracked. But look at the colours of that. There's a crack there. But look, you know, you're almost getting a bit of sort of blue in there. So that's cracked. Ah, now this one's quite nice. Different colour on the handle. Slip inside. House clay. What else have we got? <laughs> this is most peculiar. These are some pots I made at least a month ago, perhaps a bit more. And see how the heat has the huge variation. House clay again. Huge variation in the colours and the... Uh, now that one, it's not actually cracked. But look at this here. This is Tetford clay, and it's almost got that feel of an engineering brick. Weird. And I tried very much to uh, to stop this overheating of the bottom 
layer. So I'll show you in a minute what I did. Right, we've got another one here. This is Tetford. And it was this way of, so away from the fire a bit, but the fire has caught it there and it's sort of gone blue. Perfect, it'll do. Then we've got an effigy, which has got really hot, although I put some holes in the back. And then another fire brick, which is fine, put those in the pile. Now I'm just going to grab hold of the camera and show you what I did. Obviously not totally successful, so we've got strange things happening. Okay, so there's the bottom shelf and if you can see I put that wall there which is about five inches high and it's of um, kiln shelf um, stuck in there with some fire cement and that was to protect things from this raging heat and um, it sort of did to perhaps a greater extent than last time but we've still got some faults but there you go that's the weirdness of wood firing. So here's the kiln chart. 820, 5 degrees, 47 degrees in an hour. But it went up to 43 after half an hour. And then we raised quite quickly there. 47 to 160 at 10 o'clock so that's an hour and 40 minutes to get to 160 and then we leveled out and it was a very steady rise apart from just there between 1 o'clock and 130 we went from 6 to 750 there was a bit here where it was just struggling and then we leveled right out whether or not that bit caused the damage, don't know. Leave you to it. There you go. Let's have a bit of a discussion about this. Anybody with any thoughts of how to uh, reduce those overburns would be very interesting. And as you've seen on the kiln chart, um, there might have been one place where the temperature raised a bit too quick. Anyway, let's have a chat. Catch up with you soon. Cheers for now.